So let's let's begin by sharing how the week was. So I was I was giving the overview of today's standup as we are going to present. Then after we have a guest from batch four. Then after of course we do the hot seat session. So Yabi or Yabi guy is going to read today's uh, standup, but he's going to be there for five minutes probably. So we can start by sharing how the weekend was. My weekend was great, and also the week was good, uh, generally overall. So we can hear from the rest of you guys who is willing to share with us how the week was, week nine, and also how the weekend was. Feel free to jump for the moment here. So it looks like no one wants to share. So I'm going to go to the list probably. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. So just to recap on my last week, it was uh, an interesting week. I got to learn a lot of new things. Uh, I've been wanting to do a project on Kafka for so long, and I got to do that uh, last week. So, yeah, uh, overall, it was... there was also the group dynamic, which was which taught me a lot about myself and also about. And on the weekend, I was out with my uh, cousin, we had some quality time, and yeah, that was fun. Thank you, Anot. Uh, what's your feeling about uh, week 10? Is starting? Anot, can you hear me? Sorry, uh, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I was asking, how are you feeling about the week is starting? I think uh, there will be some, uh, like a lot of new stuff to learn, but I feel ready. Yeah, it, it will be a lot of work, but I'm ready for it. Okay. Thanks a lot for sharing. Hi, Ababa. I see how have been. Thank you. Uh, hi, Everest. Like, I've just give me three minutes. I'm just getting in the office. Okay. So, just uh, maybe one person can update and then I'll continue. No problem. So, we are just sharing how the week nine was uh, before we start the presentation. So, can we hear from Nardos? Hi everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Can you hear me? Ah, okay. So last week was uh, uh, was kind of tough having uh, to work with groups, but in the end we managed to do good, and it was great. And uh, yeah, this week I haven't seen the challenge document yet, but since it's Web three, I'm very excited. And yeah, that's. Thanks, Nardos. But you are, you are shared, right? Even though you are, you are not there. You have yes, not yes. No, yeah, of course. Okay. I saw it. I just didn't read it thoroughly. That's all. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Nardos, yeah. for sharing. Yeah. Let's hear from Jonas Tadesa. Hello. All right. Uh, so, uh, my weekend was uh, a little bit. Uh, I can say good. There was uh, a power outrage, so uh, I had to just do nothing and rest uh, for this week. And uh, I hope we're going to uh, learn a lot of new things. With three, uh, I, I believe it's going to be exciting. Right. Thanks, Jonas. I hope that uh, you got enough time to 
to rest and also that you are that you are excited about the week you are starting. Thanks for sharing. Can we hear from Faith? Faith, are you on or can yeah. Hello. are you able to share? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, um, last week was uh, was okay. Um, I tried to learn um, some about uh, data engineering because um, past uh, project in uh, data engineering, uh, I didn't uh, I personally perform uh, really well. Um, but uh, with group work, uh, I've been uh, shadowing what they did. Uh, I must say I didn't uh, contribute much, uh, but I've uh, been shadowing what they did. So um, I learned. Uh, I learned some. And uh, <clears throat> to uh, this week, uh, this week challenge uh, about Web three. I think it's a second project. So uh, I'm looking forward also to improve and uh, learn about uh, Web three. Okay, thanks. So, so you mentioned that uh, honestly you went. You did not uh, contribute much to the group. What was the broker? Can you share? Um, I think it's uh, uh, um, all about uh, the tools that we used. Um, I used Windows, and uh, I wasn't able to really. Um, I I felt to install. Um, uh, Linux uh, subsystem, Windows uh, Linux subsystem. Um, so I couldn't use, uh, I couldn't uh, successfully install much of the tools. Yeah, I'll say uh, regarding the tools, that was the block up from my side. Okay, so I hope that you're excited about week 10. All right. So I hope that you're going to be really doing great for this week, even though probably as you can sense it, like last week wasn't uh, very productive on your end. Uh, but I hope that you will also catch up on the first what you did from week nine and also before that. Uh, thanks for sharing. So, and I wish that this week is going to be great. So just waiting for the Abiba just to be ready so that we can just continue. Hi, Abiba, are you ready to? Hey, now I am ready. Yeah. Great. Okay. So. Okay. So. I just want to, I'm, I'm not sure if you informed them, uh, uh, the verse, the plan. Yeah, about the guest. Yeah, I, I informed them about this program today. Okay, wonderful. So, yeah, then the idea is actually really, um, you will present five, five minutes each group, and then we will have by uh, batch four training, who is working in a very similar thing. So basically an extension, different extension of what you have been working today. Uh, and he was developing basically for a South African company for data collection, in particular for data labeling um, pipeline. And a lot of things have changed. I mean, in a way they don't want it much more from public, but they want it mostly from the basically labelers. You know, they will hire data labelers and they would basically uh, do a number of things. So they, they won't use much of the technology used, for example, Kafka and others, which is much more of the scalable component of it. But in any way, it would be nice, I asked him to come and present what basically has changed or you know, the way of thinking around that if you wanna go now in terms of production elements, so he will continue. But before that, we will have each group five minutes to really basically time yourself. I know you may have not been prepared for five minutes, but time yourself in such a way that, okay, the first one minute do something and then skip and then uh, spend three minutes basically on the work. And then the last one minute wrapping up, concluding and 
asking anything uh, from your team. Just uh, that we will continue. So for the sake of time, we'll just go from group one, group two, whatever, unless group one is not ready and they want uh, group two or uh, whoever is ready to continue. Okay. Any, any question on that? Okay, so it seems no question. So let's continue group one, just stay last in five minutes, the achievements that you have managed to do last week. Okay, should I present? Uh... Yeah, exactly. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, we do. Uh, but it's blank, but hopefully it will come. Just will give it a minute. It will sometimes take some time to get it on. Okay, it's taking longer. Yeah. Maybe reshare it because it helps. Oh. And people are saying you are using 22.04, but what does that mean? Oh, uh, you can't yeah. share the whole screen, it's saying. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. saying. No, I guess it will work. Just share whatever. Great, that was true. Okay. Go on. I will time. Okay. So just everyone has five minutes. Okay, so last uh, week project was uh, the purpose of the project was to build a data capturing pipeline that allows recording millions of American Swahili speakers to read digital text on different web platforms. So for this project, we used the uh, MR News uh, text classification data sets that were collected uh, with a baseline performance data set is used. The data set is collected from different news stations around uh, Ethiopia. Uh, so the technology we use, we mainly use three technology, which is was Kafka, Airflow, and Spark. Kafka is a, a distributed data store optimized for ingesting and processing streaming data in real time. Streaming data is basically a, con a content generated by thousands of data sources, which typically send data record simultaneously. And the other was Airflow. Airflow is an open source platform that for authorizing, scheduling, and monitoring data and company workflows. Airflow uses Python to create workflows that can be easily scheduled and monitored. We use the Airflow because it was it can schedule a task as soon as an event is triggered and it's easy to use and to integrate with other tools as well. And the third the platform await all tool we use was a, a general prediction data processing engine that is suitable for use in a wide range of circumstances. It's, it's suitable for this project because we can process and clean big data which in our case is audio data from our users with ease. It will help, it's help, it will help to process and clean and store our data in a necessary bucket. So mainly uh, we have uh, divided our uh, project in three main components. The first one was starting from managing the user interaction beginning with the application portion. The user can use the program and to send their dictation and request text to be dictated. Uh, the second methodology was then Spark will pick up from the, the, the data that was stored by the user in the cluster and will do the necessary processing steps and load it to a S3 bucket. The S3 bucket will be used to store the data that's contained free from the text audio input topic that we have created in this particular case. That airflow component scheduled every two minutes. And the third methodology will be the audio file will be retrieved by Spark, uh, Spark uh, component again, which if extra necessary person needed will be applied. And after applying the necessary pre-process step, we'll validate with the pre-trained module. 
and if uh, it's validate, we'll save it in another pre uh, process S3 bucket if validation metric is used. So let me show you a demo of the. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so this is basically the. Okay, so someone will ask for a transcription. It will show a transcription. Then it will click this button and read. For example, talking and me asking, let's try to tell ways to name the ego searching in a canon. Then it will stop the recording and hear if the particular. The user can download it and send uh, download his voice if necessary and send when send it will send to the cluster topic and Spark will continue and pre-processing it. We for the full project uh, we haven't fully integrated all the necessary steps uh, since of different OS we have been using and uh, little problem you know, on the AWS we have been faced and this is uh, our project yeah. great you have one minute anyone want to add for me or other groups uh, the group so in a way like what has what is like now when the audio is sent what happens is all mechanics working like is it going to be like if now a thousand people are sending is going to be handled by kafka and then being fetched and processed by yeah the, the whole idea was the, the we we have implemented it but it seems like we, since we have div, uh, divided the tax up and integrating the, all the, it together it took us some time and still we haven't fully in it but yeah. we it will dump it on the Kafka cluster this particular then uh, with the next integration we have this was to continue spark from like continues all day okay great thanks thanks group one group two Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Okay, good. So uh, I'll just start from the from our system design. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Okay, good. Uh, so we ha we we have like the main component, the Kafka, the Spark in the Airflow. And for the user interaction, we chose to go uh, with the uh, front end and back end uh, paradigm with the request response uh, paradigm. Uh, we have a React front end app, which uh, looks like something like this. And that sends this uh, request to the to a Flask API to get the text, which are fetched from a Kafka topic. And when, uh, after the user has recorded an audio, it sends this down to the Flask API again through a post request. And that's uh, also published to uh, a Kafka broker on a different topic. And then uh, the, the data transmission happens through, uh, meaning the data transmission happens through the Flask uh, API to the to and from the Kafka brokers. and. For the uh, transformation in proce uh, pro processing stuff, we try to implement uh, Spark. We have some uh, working code for it, but we didn't like properly dockerize it and uh, deploy uh, the Spark and also the Airflow part. But we're using Spark to clean the audio to remove some uh, like silences in the audio and also uh, some noises, and uh, we haven't added a validation state yet but 
the idea was to use some third party API and check the validity of the recorded audio and then finally save the like the valid ones into uh, RS3 bucket. Uh, like, uh, and we also uh, have Airflow for publishing uh, like the CSV uh, rows into the Kafka topic, which the React app will get uh, sentences from. Uh, we're using the like Israel's data set, uh, the one that's uh, used for news classification and we chose to go with the article column and from there, we separated it into uh, sentences using full stop in question marks and then took the sentences from there and that's what, uh, what we're using for our uh, other uh, data source. So uh, the, the data will be fetched from uh, the S3 bucket and published to a Kafka topic, uh, which is handled, this like, task is handled by Airflow and also uh, it, uh, it fires up the, the Spark jobs like in, in bytes. And then uh, once the data is uh, like available here, it gets published uh, again using Airflow, it gets published to a third Kafka topic, which will have the uh, process text audio pair, which is a unique, uh, which has a unique identifier uh, that syncs itself and then, and then the audio file. Uh, so I I don't have a, like a proper demo here because uh, I was hoping we would have the AWS instances running, but we have a video. Uh, is the video visible first? Can someone give me an indication? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so. I was muted, sorry. Okay. Okay, so, so uh, they can uh, get the uh, take, we just pause here. They can just, uh, they can get the text uh, when they load. They can uh, use the button here to skip uh, sentence if they don't want to read it or they just want to skip it. They can uh, record and listen to the recorded audio and once there is a recorded uh, audio there will be an upload button here uh, let me just play it and we will see is it now recording the audio that's why this is moving and oh, let me just fast forward okay uh, once he's done he pressed the stop button and then uh, and then he can uh, finally send the audio to, to the Flask API, which will then publish it to Kafka. And to visualize uh, the our Kafka uh, brokers, we've used uh, some other third-party uh, web app for visualizing Kafka, which is called uh, Kafdrop. So that's what uh, that's what you see here right now. So we have the brokers, the different topics. And uh, this is the first topic, the one that has the text message, the sentences, I mean. And then uh, these are like each message that, that is inside that topic. And next, uh, we'll see the how how like the audio it takes various stored. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I think it's un unfortunately it the only reason that you couldn't get the cluster starting at the moment is that after being stopped last night, it actually failed to restart for whatever called insufficient capacity. And that may be just that some of, um, some of the, if the storage probably is full and it's probably having an issue, but I'll try to <laughs> arrange like maybe later another just go through on the, especially just the demo element, uh, if, it, if it managed to start. Yeah, okay. 
so yeah, this is uh, how it's stored on Kafka. Uh, just uh, unique identifier, the same things. In the audio is just a, a one dimensional array. And yeah. Okay, so yeah, like, great. Thanks. Um, group three. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay, so unfortunately there is no power here, so I couldn't uh, uh, log in with my, uh, drain in with my PC, so would it be okay if I present using my phone? Sure, yeah, as long as it's presentable. Okay, le let me know if it's uh, visible. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So. It's kind of very hard to see, unfortunately, but let's see. Is there no anyone from your team that can present this thing? And then you can talk. Maybe uh, if someone has this already opened, uh, I'm not sure if anyone in my group is or in the meeting. Yeah, I'm here, but I'm sorry, I'm also on my phone due to okay. power outage. But is it part of have you submitted this thing? So can we open? I can. Yeah, yeah, we have submitted this uh, uh, document. Okay, so final submission is that the, the report, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so I can present again. Okay, okay. Let me present to you, Daniel. Okay, okay, Gazi. Are you sharing your screen, Gazi? <clears throat> I'm not seeing it. Okay. Okay, can, can you, you yeah, scroll down to the picture so that we can explain. Yeah, basically this is our uh, uh, implementation. Uh, there is a backend in front into it, and uh, basically uh, the others already mentioned that exactly. <clears throat> All the front end and back end will communicate. Ours uh, doesn't have uh, much difference to what they explained, but uh, basically one difference we uh, might have with others is that uh, uh, when the user sends this audio, uh, it's not going to be uh, uh, sent to the Kafka cluster as an array. Uh, somewhere we read that uh, uh, audio and video file should be stored somewhere else and uh, their metadata should be uh, uploaded to Kafka uh, and then uh, <coughs> up, uh, uh, <coughs> accessed from a uh, URL from the metadata. Mm -hmm. So what we did was just uh, from the, uh, <coughs> we when the user sends this audio data, it will be directly sent to an S3 bucket, but its URL information will be included in a, a metadata that's going to be forwarded to a Flask backing server and again back uh, to a Kafka cluster. So, uh, uh, Gazi, do you have uh, our GitHub uh, account opened? Yeah, maybe open the project okay. in the Google repo so that we can show the front end implementation, the pictures. But your your instance is also running, just in case. So, group three and oh. four instances running. If you just uh, do, we have time to uh, maybe. Yeah, that, maybe uh, maybe later. But just I'm just saying now, like I. Uh, Okay, just okay. So, go into it. Just by all of your information, it's because the only reason is that there are no enough CPU, like enough machines in Amazon 
North Virginia at the moment. So that's what okay. kind of that means that really there's so many people running. So basically we run out of machines for uh, AWS to run, to give us machines. So we're waiting and as soon as that okay. is. Okay, uh, does so anybody you... Two minutes, so just try to optimize. Okay, uh, go to the extra folder, not the front end, the extra folder. Extra folder, yeah. Uh, the image, no, screenshots, screenshots. Yeah. Reports. Yeah, start from the first one, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, when we open, uh, this is uh, actually our front-end implementation. Uh, at the start, you can see that uh, there is a, a, a text uh, telling you to load the text. When we press the button uh, that says so for now to do, uh, the next page will be loaded. Uh, go to the next image uh, in the list, uh, Gazi. And then when the text is loaded, as you can see, the text has changed. Uh, it's saying now by Jonathan Karabat, Aaron, and so on and so on. Now the next thing is recording the audio, so just move on to the next image. Sorry for making this uh, a bit fast. Uh, I'm trying to present it as soon as, as quickly as possible. So uh, on the third point, as you can see, it's recording now. Uh, we would have been, uh, we would have shown you uh, this live, but unfortunately uh, it's, we can't right now, just uh, to the fourth uh, picture. Yeah, once it's recorded, as you can see, now uh, it's ready to be sent. Uh, we've uh, we've uh, go to the second, the, uh, the next picture again. You could have just opened normally with the, the upgrade. Okay, so uh, I think you reopened. Now it's playing, as you can see. Uh, um, it's a uh, recorded five seconds of uh, audio. Now go to the next stage, which is just the upload stage. Uh, we're not going to be able to see the upload process, but we press the button and what's going to happen in the back end is just uh, we're going to send the audio to a Flask server, which will extract the metadata out of the audio and send the audio to, as I said before, to an S3 bucket and the the metadata to Kafka, and then the Kafka will be consumed by a Spark uh, uh, script, a uh, script that uh, executes the Spark. A Spark basically allows you to execute uh, your tasks in a distributed manner, so we've, we have managed to do that as well. So in the end, uh, it uh, will uh, perform kind of cleaning. The only cleaning implementation we tried to implement was just uh, correcting the uh, rate, the audio uh, sampling rate, which is 44,000. This was normally eight, eight around eight, so we sampled it to 44,000 in a distributed manner using the Spark uh, script. And after that, we saved the metadata and we generated some more metadata like duration uh, in the channels. Uh, so. Uh, light of time, I think uh, yeah. I should stop here. Yeah, I think just let's stop here. Now all of the instances are running and that means like, so let's now go to talk if Daniel is here already. Is Daniel, have we accepted Daniel? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, great. So let's go to him and then in the meantime, you guys like some, at least just uh, whatever presentation you have, you can follow later. We will follow later, so you, you, will, you will continue. But now, what I want is just for you, like Daniel has, has done and in, in, was in batch four, and he has done this project. And what I want, what I asked him to present was just, of course, his project topics and kind of uh, mandates are very different, but at least the context is the same. So he, I, um, he would like, I mean, I asked him to show us what in production, what are the things that you actually also focus in, where is, most of your time spent um, in this kind of project. Again, project, the technologies are different, but, and thank you, Daniel, for agreeing. And okay, now the you're welcome. Is... Okay. So, hi, everyone. Uh, so, as you have introduced me, my name is Daniel Zalalam, and uh, I'm, my backgrounds were software engineering. I graduated from Matisaba University, 
and I was also a batch for an academy training. And currently, I'm working at Real Labs uh, company uh, with a renowned professor, uh, Bruce. Uh, so, yeah, that's just uh, a little bit from my uh, introduction side. So, I'm going to jump up to the presentation so that we can uh, uh, use our time effectively. So, I will be sharing my screen. It's coming. Okay. See. So can you yeah, see my see. screen? Yeah. yeah, we can see the screen. Okay. Okay, let me sign in again. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for that. Hello. Here. Let's go and check. Okay. Okay. So what we are going to talk about is about my project at. Labs. Uh, it was my first project, and uh, uh, the task the task was to build a data collection or a data not, uh, annotation platform that can be used for uh, most machine learning projects. So that can be customizable and flexible, so that it can be used for any machine learning project. So that was my first project, uh, but it was just a subsystem. So the in the greater picture, the project was inside, uh, which is called active learning, uh, building an active learning uh, system. I will be explaining about that. So the active learning system or the active learning library, which we, are, which we need to build, has a, another component, which is a data collection system. So uh, that is the the greater picture. So let me jump up to the introduction. So we wanted to build a tool or some kind of package that can orchestrate the life cycle of a machine learning project with an active learning. So uh, what's active learning, first of all? So active learning is a subset of machine learning in which the learning algorithm can query a user interactively to label data with the desired uh, output. So, uh, so Danny, just uh, can you press slideshow so that it's full screen? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. No, no, it's okay. 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 So, yeah, uh, this way is better. So, what active learning did that? So, for example, you have a model, uh, you have a machine learning project that has a model, and you have a machine learning pipeline. So, there is a training data, and uh, there is a training code. You, you can test the model, then deploy the model, right? Then after that, after the model is deployed, then it will accept, it will start accepting real-time data for making a prediction. So that means it starts, uh, it starts accepting inference data. So in active learning, those inference, so the model starts making predictions and in active learning, those inference data, the requests will be sent back to a data collection platform, a data collection system, so that humans or uh, work, uh, we call them workers, so human labelers or annotators can label the data that the model was accepting, and those data will be again ingested to the machine learning pipeline so that we can compare uh, the quality of the model, how the model is performing. So whether it was making a good quality prediction or not. So we compared it using the data that we have received from the human labelers. Then if we need to retrain the model, we will update the model and deploy the second version. 
So this loop will continue so that the module will always get updated and uh, yeah, uh, the quality of the module will be stable. So that's the target. So it is a kind of some kind of human in the loop paradigm. So what is the major benefit for such kind of approach is that uh, usually models tends to decrease in, in performance as time goes by. Uh, for example, if you have uh, some kind of house predictor model, uh, for example, let's say you trained that model before the corona pandemic and you have a training data uh, and you train the house predictor model. Then after the, after the corona pandemic, the whole uh, uh, data that we are expecting will be different because uh, the sales might be influenced by the pandemic and such kind of things can cause the data to be drifted. So the model will start to decrease in performance wise. So what we will get is that it, we will get a model drift. So uh, because the data that the model was trained is outdated. So uh, using an active learning or human in the loop approach will uh, uh, will uh, prevent us from uh, such kind of problems so that the models get updated with always with uh, uh, up-to-date data so that's about active learning so the as I, as I, to I told you before we have two subsystems in this project the first is the machine learning pipeline that's being orchestrated with an automation tool so, and the second is a data collection system or a data collection platform so that uh, labelers, human labelers can annotate or uh, uh, provide a, a data so that the, the machine learning pipeline could use. So that is the whole picture of the project that I'm involved in. Mm, yeah. So today we are going to focus only the data on the data collection uh platform so it's called Labs data and it was it is a web-based platform or an application used to label or annotate data so uh, when i say labeling or annotating it means like uh, what you have done for example in this week's project uh there is a text a sentence and you give the audio right so that's what i mean by labeling or annotating uh a data so it's used for labeling or annotating, annotating data for a machine learning project. And the key requirements or the niche of these uh, platforms are the following. So the first thing is flexibility or customizability. This, is, this was the first challenge. So the data collection tool should be suitable for collecting data for any machine learning project that we need. So it should support, basically it should support different types of data. Uh, for example, if you have a speech to text uh, project, then the, the data that needs to be labeled is the speech and the target data or the annotation is going to be a text data type. But if you have a machine translation project, for example, the source data, meaning the data that needs to be labeled is a text in some kind of source language and the target data is going to be also a text type. And also maybe if you have, for example, an image classification project, then the question data, the data that's going to be labeled is going to be an image and the uh, target thing, the target label is going to be a text because uh, we are doing a classification. It might be a text or it might be a digit. So it should support different type of data types. So this, uh, this is going to be done in a single platform. The second thing is data quality assessment. So we need to have a, mecha a mechanism to assess the quality of the data. So for example, some of the labelers that are labeling our data might do a poor job that might affect our machine learning pipeline. So we need to have some kind of mechanism to tell that uh, the labeling or the annotation that the labelers are making are good or not. And the third is a smart task allocation. So in this system, we have, uh, we, have uh, we call them workers or labelers that labels uh, a question data. When I say question data, that a data that needs to be labeled. So 
based on, based on the performance of the human labelers, based on the performance of the workers, uh, a task allocation algorithm should allocate, smart, it should allocate tasks in a smart way. So that's uh, the third requirements that, uh, that was required by the platform. So just this is a simple, uh, yeah, graph. It's funny, I, I just uh, put it in a rush. So uh, sorry for the low quality of the graph. But so for example, if you have an admin here, and wants to collect data for a machine learning project, what he will do is he will initiate a collection job in our platform. So in the platform that uh, was built. So uh, it, he, he will give a job description and the data that needs to be labeled. For example, in your case, it's going to be, the data is going to be a speech, uh, uh, some audio files. So and those tasks are going to be inserted into a task queue so we have a task queue and the job will be created then the admin will also uh, add workers or he will subscribe workers to that job that he initiated and the workers when i say the workers those are the data labelers will get notification and they will start uh, annotating data so uh and for example we have a worker a here and let's say uh he requests not a QA task but uh, a task needs to be labeled uh, so task is selected from a task queue and is is going to be assigned to this worker so that another worker will not uh annotate will not uh respond to the tasks that this worker is assigned and this is done by the task allocation uh, algorithm, then the worker will do labeling and return response and the response is record, recorded and it will be inserted into a QA task queue. So QA task queue is a task, it's a type of task in, in our platform, it's a type of task that another workers will give a quality assessment score to the work of uh, other labelers. So, for example, if this worker be wants uh, a quality assessment task, so this worker has done a data labeling task. This is, uh, I, I say this, it says it requests QA task, but this is wrong. Uh, uh, this is requesting a data labeling task. So another worker be might request a quality assessment task, then task is selected from a QA task queue. So responses that were recorded by this worker is inserted in the task queue and uh, those task queue uh, into the QA task queue and from that this worker will be assigned a QA task, a quality assessment task. So worker then, this worker will give a QA score for the response that worker A has done and the QA score is recorded and if the QA score is evaluated as a good quality, then uh, the task will be flagged as a completed task. But uh, if it is not, then this task will be reinserted into the task queue so that another worker can do uh, good labeling or annotation annotation for the task. So this is the just from to show you the picture of the platform, how and the key terms. So it's a web-based platform and it's built using a client server architecture. It has a front-end application built using React and uh, a RESTful backend API that was built by an you know, JS application. And uh, it depends on some AWS resources, the platform depends on some AWS response uh, resources. For example, uh, if we need the, for file storage, for example, if the data that's going to be annotated is uh, an audio type or an image type, it should be stored on an S3 bucket. And for database, it sh we used a Postgres database and for sending notification alerts, uh, features that many software applications have 
we use we used SDS service. So, so the first challenge was customizability, as I told you. So the type of data that's going to be collected for different machine learning projects are different. For example, if it is machine learning translation and uh, question part. So from this time, when I say question part, that means the data that needs to be labeled. So the type is text and the target type. So the annotation is also a text. Uh, for example, if we have uh, speech recognition, then the question type is going to be an audio file and uh, the target type is going to be a text. So for example, if we have an image recognition, then in the question part, we, we are going to have uh, an image file and uh, the annotation is, might be a bounding box. So uh, that's going to be represented in a JSON object. So, so the difference comes here. The way to render the data to be labeled for the workers and the way we also process and store the responses or the annotations for of the workers are different for different uh, data types. So how can we have a generalized way of supporting these different data types? So that's what we mean. We meant by customizability or flexibility. So uh, um, as I told you before, the data we need have two parts, which is the question. The uh, then just just to give you, uh, we have five minutes, so just so that oh, you can optimize. I, I have finished. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I have finished. Okay. I'm going to jump in into the demo. So uh, the data we need have two parts: the question part and the annotation, which is the response tab. So. Uh, so for each data collection job that is initiated, a configuration file. Uh, describing the data type of the question part and the response type, the annotation is going to be generated. So uh, the data types can be, so uh, the way I solve this uh, problem is by just when we create a job, there will be a configuration file that's going to be generated, which tells what kind of data type we are expecting. So the data types can be text, and in case of text, it can be a classification. If it's a classification task, it's going to be a class, or if we are expecting just uh, a free uh, a text, uh, it's going to be a free text or for a multi-class classification, a multi-class classification. So for example, for a machine learning translation, the question part is going to be the text and the response part is going to be a text with uh, a free text uh, box so that, uh, yeah, we will accept the target uh, sentence. So yeah, the second challenge with data quality assessment. So I have also described this one, but if the workers are poor in doing their job, so uh, we need a quality assessment task for the data annotation. So workers are also are tasked to give quality assessment scores to each other's data labeling. So this is the solution one on one currently that we are using. So data that with bad labeling it are then reinserted to it, the task queue so that it, it, they are going to be relabeled. So I have set up the platform in my local machine so that uh, it has, yeah, some of the features that uh, I have told, I have discussed here. Uh, and let me just show you the demonstration. So in the React application, we have two portals, the admin portal, uh, which will be responsible for managing jobs, creating jobs, exporting the data after the data is collecting. And we have also the workers portal so that uh, the workers can access the tasks so, and they can annotate. it. So this is the admin portal. And uh, this platform is uh, configured to work for audio to, no, text to audio data collection. So I have made the configuration to work in that way. If I change the configuration file, then the platform will be changed. So let us create a new data collection job and maybe 10x, let, we, let us call it 10x. And this will be the instruction that the workers are going to see. And we have two kinds of tasks. The first one is called the primary task and primary task is uh, a labeling task and the second task is called 
quality assessment task. So if we need a quality assessment task for the data that's going to be collected, uh, so we will switch on this uh, feature too. So uh, yeah, uh, if we want to also to upload instructions for the tasks, so we might upload the file like this. This is a demo for QA task. And let us also upload a QA uh, instruction file. And here we have also an option which says uh, require a primary task with low QA to be written. So if we click this one, so tasks that are scored below a threshold that we give are going to be inserted into it, the, the task queue so that they can be redeveloped again. So just I will leave it to zero now, or I will uncheck. And uh, so here we can specify the percentage of uh, quality assessment tasks that are going to be generated from the data that we are uh, collecting. So for example, if we say 100 here, then 100% uh, of the data that are collected will, uh, will have also a quality assessment score. Uh, in case we, we put 200, then every tasks that are labeled will have two QA scores, will require two QA scores. Uh, we can also, yeah, this is a little bit detailed, so let me just upload the file. So uh, I have an Excel file right here. So that the Excel file, okay, let me show you the Excel file. So, uh, So, yeah, these are sample sentences. So we have sentences and uh, the, uh, we are trying to initiate a, an audio data collection. So, uh, so I have uploaded that file and it says, which columns do you want to be displayed for the workers? Then I will, uh, I want only the question parts to be displayed and if I say submit the job is then created now is the time to add the workers so that they can start annotating well, I have two sample workers here so uh, now the workers will start annotating they will receive a notification using their email and they will start uh, annotating so let me just log in in the uh, workers portal so workers Uh, yeah, this is John Doe. So as you can see, he has been added to this job, which is 10x that we have created now. And uh, well, the first sentence is very <laughs> long. So yeah, yeah, it's just for example purpose. So yeah, uh, he can start recording and give the response. And also then another task is He's requesting another task and another task is being fished. So let us say the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And uh, this way he can start annotating. So good day to you, sir. Yeah. And uh, now if I log into the other worker, So this is the second worker that uh, we have added to this job. Uh, 
he is also added to this project. So he can also request a data labeling task, which is called the primary task or a quality assessment task. In case it's a quality assessment task, then this is the work that the first worker has done and he can give it, he can listen and give the quality score for that. And uh, maybe this one too. And yeah, this was the first task that the worker has done. Let us give it 60. And uh, now there is there are no more QA, uh, tasks on the QA queue on the QA task queue. So he can also do another data annotation like well done Kupita. So if he and that worker will receive this uh, data so that it can be also scored. So if we, if the first worker jumped to this uh, tasks, like well done, Kipita. Yeah, this was the work, the annotation done by the second worker. So he can also give a QA score to that. So, um, yeah. Great. I think yes. this is excellent, Danny. Thank you. I think this is a good place probably to stop unless you have any last minute. Uh, one okay. Answer. Okay. Yeah. Then the final thing is from the admin side, he can collect, uh, he can see how much the worker has done, uh, like their completion rate, the average time taken, uh, tasks done per day and the average quality assessment, they can also export their data uh, so that it can be used for the machine learning pipeline. So the other important thing is that this is using the user interface. So uh, this platform also I have uh, requires a Python package so that uh, we can, the operation that uh, can be done using the user interface can be also done programmatically using Python. So it has also that feature so that using that python package we are con we connect we are using this platform on the machine learning pipeline on the active uh, learning pipeline so uh, periodically uh, the that pipeline will uh, initiate uh, will uh, add data to a job then those data are uh, labeled then it will ingest those data when it's finished and train the model deploy it then uh, the inferences data will come at uh, real time data when the model is in production mode. Then those inference data will then also again uh, will be sent to the data collection pl platform so that the workers can label those data. And when those data are finished, then the model is going to be retrained again and again. So this loop will always continue. So that is the whole picture of the project. So that way you might see some interesting implementation of a data collection platform with the machine learning pipeline that's all from me uh sorry for taking uh, no. Time. no but thank you thank you this is really excellent and um so just one question i have is that how much has it been used like in terms of volume of data that was oh. that was used is it in production and has it already resulted into something interesting okay yeah, so it is now in testing phase, but we we are collecting data that uh, that we need for uh, that we need for a client. So uh, we have given this platform to a client uh, company so that they can test, but at the same time uh, collect data that they are using. So, uh, for example, uh, in just matter of ten days, they have collected around 15,000 data for a machine uh, translation uh, project. So, uh, yeah. I, th I think this would be excellent to just track also like the volume of data that was, that has been passed through your system so that ultimately, you know, that, that is a known number, like you say, yeah. you know, yeah. um, 100 gigabyte of data has been processed by it or an uh, X amount of audio file was processed so that it gets a very interesting number. But great, awesome. And any question from anyone? Binyam. Okay. okay.
the presentation. It was, I mean, the audio is uh, really. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we do. Okay, so. Yeah, something. Some your audio is really not good. Is it? Uh, yeah, now it's, now it's better. I think it's like somehow like connection with your um, mic, like earphone or something. Maybe, maybe you can fix it, that one, and then I think it's a bit uh, not comfortable for the ear. Okay. Can, you, can you mute? Maybe type it, your question. Anyone else? Anyone has question to Danny? Okay, we're waiting for Inium's text or another try or on on the mic. Two and, and then another while it's waiting, Danny. How much? Like how many files do you support now? Do you support all image to JSON, image to text, text to whatever, all of that? You're mute, you're, you're, you're mute. So currently it supports text to text, audio to text, text to audio, and uh, image to text, yeah, right. But uh, the, uh, the one for image, classification that we need for using a bounding box uh, that one has not been extended yet that was uh, our uh, next priority so to extend so currently yeah text to text works uh, so in when we say text to text it can be also a classification in the response side in the annotation type it can be uh, a free text like we have on the machine translation, or it can also be a multi-class classification task uh, and also a scoring task. So for example, if there is uh, a problem like uh, uh, sentiment analysis, for example, let's say, uh, what is the sentiment of this uh, sentence from one to 10? Uh, so that's kind of uh, tasks are called scoring tasks. So it also supports that. And also from text to audio and audio to text are also supported. Great. Uh, yeah. So Biniam has asked, where does the Excel um, file with the question come from? Are they generated okay. automatically from a prediction of some model? Yeah. So how we are, so uh, this, the Gray Labs data is a standalone uh, system. So you can use it for only data collections uh, uh, use cases, but how we are using it, using it is using the machine learning pipeline that I that I explained before. So the data uh, uh, that's coming, uh, that's always being added to the job is coming from the model predictions. So the model is accepting uh, real time data uh, when it's in when it's deployed. So those data are selected using an active learning algorithm, subset of some data are selected using an active learning algorithm. And those data are uh, pushed to our system, which is the data collection platform. So yeah, currently Thanks. we are using it in this manner. Yeah, no, that's great. I think that's yeah. a niche market. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Daniel. And okay. so I assume uh, there is no question. So um, thank you again. And then we will continue back now to the presentations by the uh, teams. So okay. I think we stopped uh, on on team number three, if I'm not mistaken. But Biniam, if you, your team, if they also want to present the live, then we have. So we will have to finish by 11.30 or at least before that. So let's just, if you, I can give you two minutes if it's already ready, you want to demonstrate. But thank you again. Um, okay. Dan. Okay, thank you. So I have to go now? Yeah, uh, sure. You okay. can go. Thank you again. Okay, bye. Okay. So group three, do you want to give it a go, the demo? Is it working everything or should we go to...
think it's group four. Okay, let's go to group four. Yeah, uh, so uh, I'll just, let me share the screen. The same if group one and group two wanted at the end to also demo based on the cluster, you can. So just let me know uh, in the text. Okay, are you able to see the screen? Hello? Yeah, yeah, so uh, we just as the way the other groups have said that we used Kafka, Airflow and Spark uh, for the purposes of doing uh, the streaming, the scheduling and also uh, storing into the S3 bucket and also doing the data transformations, that is the ETL pipeline. And so we just uh, used more or less the methodology that uh, was presented in the particular that was that was already presented that is we begin by first of all generating an id and once uh, we generate that particular id a 32 base 16 character that can be used to identify the audio file and random text that will appear on the screen so that's the first thing that we do then the next thing is uh, generating the text which uh, we already uh, were we already we access the particular data set and then we generate a random a text and then once we get a particular uh, random text then we now stream it to the kafka uh, cluster that is uh, we'll, 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 we'll get it and stream it to the kafka cluster then the front end will have will be in the position to act in that format of the producer and the consumer publishing and subscribing and so the moment that uh, we publish the random text data uh, remembering that we had already generated the uuid uh, with this which we configure with this particular API, we shall be able to uh, get it to the. Uh, we, we shall be able to get it to the particular front end. So once we send it to the front end, the next thing is uh, we pre-process that data that now comes from the front end. So pre-processing that data is we get the audio file and we do four validations. That's the first thing we check if the audio file uh, is actually. Uh, is actually there then the second thing is the frequencies of the audio file and then the third thing is uh we check whether it ha the, the 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 there's those human patterns using the mfccs then the fourth thing uh, which used to validate whether the audio file is okay is uh we split the audio file into chunks that is into words and then uh we count the number of chunks whether they're similar to the length of the article uh string split that is uh we 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 split the article and we count both of the two data sets so that you can see whether they compare so once we do that uh if it actually goes through it will just say that this audio is worth it to be pushed to the bucket and then uh, we'll transform it and once after transforming it we push it to the bucket as you can see over here then after that we do two uh scheduled tasks the first task is to push the is the first task is updating the metadata then the second task is updating the model so after updating the metadata it will continue to the next task that is updating the model then uh, finally we'll just come to uh, our particular aws and and check uh the and check the bucket to see whether our audio loaded well so that is how our particular our particular uh methodology works and i'll hand it over to nados for the front end demonstration okay thank you martin uh, I will be sharing the content right now. So, can you see my screen? Yes, we do. Right. So, this application is going to be for allowing users to be able to provide an audio for uh, a specific text. So we uh, ideally would have two users. One is going to be someone who's going to provide an audio file for the for the subscribed text, and the second one is going to be the another user that's going to validate the audio files that was uh, sent or uploaded by the previous or the other uh, users. So the second user is going to validate an audio file that was if it matches the text or not. So that one is yet still uh, being worked on. 
so it's not done yet so i'm just going to show you or go walk you through uh, what uh, a user is going to see the first user is going to see so uh, here it's going to prompt users to uh, start and when i say gender start uh, it's going to show the user and or a text file so there are two ways to upload this either a user can choose to upload a file that was recorded by any other means of recording options and then or a user can record here so if i if, I'm, if i wanted to record this file i would just dirijitu kabanku shikar masratun astamamany yekefiya srat indi fetter astulotal so if i can just record here and then i can submit this or else i can just uh i can just submit a file i can let's say this is the file that i recorded and i wanted to post this so i can just submit this so um so yeah a user can be able to do can, can be able to upload the files in two ways and then uh okay i think it's my connection so Yeah, uh, and then I would get the response from the backend saying that it's been uploaded and thank you for your. I think is that a user is going to, uh, if I wanted to start another one, I could just read another audio and another text and then provide an audio file again. And uh, this is the previous one. I could just remove this and I can record another one. So this is a sports a sports setting that can so a user can read and then they can submit this. So this was a post of me responding to some things, but it, 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 it's great. So just can you tell us a little bit about just like you know time is up, but behind what happens like so, so is this basically everything orchestrated? And being processed, how much of how much have you guys completed in terms of the Spark and uh, you know the Kafka and the storage? Have you is that all cleanly done? So uh, I'm sorry, my brother keeps crashing whenever I stop sharing. Can you hear me? Yeah, we we do hear you. Okay, so, so the implementation part, I think Martin can continue. I just wanted to walk you through the the user part of it. You, you have basically 30 seconds, so. Okay. Okay, so Martin, maybe can you just uh, summarize that in 30 seconds? Uh, yeah, so what happens is that uh, through the ETL pipeline, you first of all extract the data from the side of the front end. It passes uh, through the uh, backend, and then it 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 it, it, it hits the Kafka cluster. Then, uh, once it hits the Kafka cluster, it is uh, generates an ID, an audio file. I mean, an ID. Then, the audio file once it's completed, uh, it's going to again uh, come now, and then we pre-process it, we validate it. After validating it, we send it uh, to the S3 bucket once it has completed all validations. Yeah. Great. Well done. Well done, guys. Okay, so let's go to five. Group five. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, can somebody yeah, confirm? We, if, yes, yes, we can see you. Okay. okay, let me just present the slide. Uh, uh, so just to the basic picture, uh, I know the image isn't good, but just uh, to show you what we have done, 
the first uh, part is the React application, the React, using the React application or the web interface, the users will be able to input the data, the audio format of the text, and we used Kafka REST. We haven't connected the front end directly to the back end or to the Flask API. We used Kafka REST to, able, to be able to communicate with Kafka, which will be able to produce messages from Kafka as well as to consume messages from Kafka. The Kafka is based on the Zookeeper. Uh, we, at first, we tried to use multi-broker architecture using three Kafka brokers as, and three Zookeepers. But when the brokers and the Zookeepers were trying to uh, repartition as well as to recommunicate, uh, to rebalance, we're having a bit of issue, and we just decided to go on Kafka uh, uh, Zookeeper. And then uh, next thing is once the user loads in, and when he clicks a button to get a text, the backend will be able to fetch data from the S3 bucket, and uh, we try to randomize the data that's being sent to the user. So the backend will try to fetch all the data and will randomly pick a single text, and it will post it or produce it to the Kafka uh, topic. And the Kafka using the Kafka REST API, the front end will be able to fetch the, the text and will be able to display it. And finally, after the user uploads the audio format of the recorded text file. Uh, the Kafka will be able to consume it, and uh, based and the, the Spark will consume that message based on the airflow schedule, and finally load it to Amazon S3 bucket. Uh, so the architecture spec uh, specification is we've used multi-broker. I think this is this should be removed. We haven't used multi-broker architecture. At first, we tried to use multi-broker architecture with two topics, but for now, we, we've only used a single broker with a single Zookeeper and a single Spark master and a worker, and a confluent Kafka cluster. So uh, to set up our Kafka cluster and all of the required configurations, we've used Docker Compose file. The Docker Compose file will be able, will be using, uh, will be hosting, will be running the Kafka clusters, the Zookeeper, the Spark Master and the Worker, the Kafka Con Confluent Control Center, Kafka REST API, Kafka Connect, the Flask API, as well as the Apache Flow in Docker Container. So all of them are ready for a deployment using the Docker Container. And future plans, yes, uh, we have tried to integrate the uh, the pipeline with the, with the model that we have previously built but, uh, to validate the audio data that's being received from the user. But because of time, we haven't implemented that fully. And uh, regarding the deployment case, we have tried to uh, configure our SL certificates for the front end. But because uh, I'm not exactly sure, but we haven't been able to communicate with the backend as well as the Kafka REST API because each of them requires some other ports to communicate in the backend. Uh, just to show you, uh, just to show you our Docker, Docker Compose file, we, we hosted all of the required uh, containers: the front end, the backend, the Spark, the Spark, the Spark Worker, the Spark Master, and other configurations that are required, which in our case are the Kafka Connect, uh, the the control center in the Kafka REST uh, API. So just to show you what the control center is, using the, the control center, we were, we were able to control and have an overview of the Kafka cluster. So currently we only have one uh, broker and with about 62 part, uh, topics. So you might ask what are the, the other 60 topics? We've used the other 60 topics. It was used internally by Kafka to manage all of the logs that were being generated by Kafka SQL, Kafka Connect, and other the, the topic configurations. But in our case, we have only used the CAF topic as well as the row topic. From the UI side, you can be able to see the messages that have been produced and also create a new topic from the Kafka Control Center. We've used, and for the Kafka, we've used Confluent uh, to manage or uh, to be able to create all of the Kafka cluster configurations. So coming to the front end, our front end is a very simple, has a very simple user interface. The user will be able to get the text data. And finally, when the text data is fetched from the Kafka topic, he will be able to record the audio format of the text. So I will first click the get text button. And what will happen is the Flask API will be able to consume uh, the, will be able to fetch a random text from S3 bucket and finally load it to the Kafka topic and our front end will be able to communicate to the Kafka topic using Kafka REST API and our data will be fetched here. So the Kafka REST API has three steps uh, in the configuration. The first one is to create a new group ID and be able to join to the Kafka cluster, then validate everything is true, everything is correct, and finally fetch the data. So now we have got a text and we have decided to upload the data directly to Kafka, the data, because on our exploratory data analysis, we have seen that 
uh, only the, the maximum number of words in a sentence in a given text is about 20 words per text. So that's less than three uh, megabytes, maximum of three megabytes of the audio format. So we decided to uh, directly upload the audio into Kafka and we have added or increased the size, the allowed, the default allowed size of the uh, uh, the message that Kafka will accept. By default, it's one megabyte. So we have increased that to five megabytes. So when I record, let me record this, the, the, let me take the audio format. Uh, sorry. COVID as well, thank the battle or a slider, And I will upload that. So in the front end, what will happen is we will convert the audio format into bytes and the byte format of the data will be uh, produced to the Kafka. So and finally, we'll get a confirmation. Thank you for your contribution. So we'll receive some kind of uh, uh, confirmation. And if you now go and uh, see the calf, the calf is the one that's being uh, that's consuming the audio data from the user. Uh, it will receive. Let me. Unfortunately, I have to stop you, Idilia, okay. just for the sake of time. But what is like the few things that you would like to say? Uh, yes, very just yeah. to add up regarding the Spark implementation, I can't say that we have fully implemented the Spark implementation because we were having a problem when communicating between the Spark driver and the Spark workers. We were able to communicate the Spark master and the Spark driver, but when it comes to the different workers that were implemented or that were deployed, we were having a bit of problem when communicating between the Spark driver and the workers. So we uh, manually or programmatically using Python uh, wrote some scripts that will be able to consume the data and load it to the S3 bucket based on the airflow schedule. Great. Awesome. So now we re reach time, but so let me ask uh, Everest and Mary, do we have to stop here? Hard, hard stop. Or do we, can we give two, three minutes for group two, one, two, three? Uh, So it is, I think we can yeah, get, go on uh, Everest. So I think like Mary has already scheduled the hot, a, a hot seat. Um, I don't know if we can probably uh, ask the night to be ready for only five minutes as, as usual. So we can probably start the tutorial after that. Let's wrap up that in five minutes for the hot seat. So yeah. maybe Biniam, you can go for two minutes and like the other team, one and two, if you want a demo, just make it really prepared and let's just see in two minutes as well yours. So go, Binium. Okay, can you hear me? Hear me? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, uh, I'm going to share my screen. Let me know when you see my screen. Can you see my screen, guys? Yeah, you can see your screen. Okay, uh, so this is the front end. I'm going to go through this as quickly as possible just to show you what's happening in the back end. This is uh, the producer that's sending a random text uh, from a selection. It has an ID in the text, as you can see, and it's sending it every second. Uh, from the front side, as you can see, when I click uh, like so full Yaordu, uh, it's uh, uh, loading texts if i click again it will load another one and another one so it's working so i'm going to record some kind of uh, like uh, it's too long to read so i'm just gonna stop it here and when i say upload it will send it uh, i haven't actually uh, implemented the confirmation part but you can come here and see that it has been implemented uh, sex uh, successfully uh, sent uh, Okay. Okay, I haven't opened the folder.
the audio until it's loading and the audio will be sent to this folder which is which is going to store the unprocessed files uh, the the semi-processed uh, uh, csv file is displayed here i'm going to open it uh, and the audio file is loaded here just to show you uh, when we add a new audio uh, as you can see uh, let's see uh, where we are right now we are around 200 bits right now uh, so if I load another one in record again, uh, now when I uh, clear this, record the new audio and upload it, uh, we should see uh, an audio in 200 uh, uh, It still hasn't finished loading, so... Uh, Sorry about that, guys. It's no, it's okay. I think it's just you can refresh it with the refresh, but uh, uh, it's it's still loading. I don't know yeah. why. Yeah, no, it, it is okay. But let let's just so the thing is it's working. So you, you just can focus on like great the backend front end is communicating. It passes through yeah. Kafka, and um, so the, what the what is what is missing? Yeah, uh, what uh, we, what's missing is uh, we have actually implemented uh, the Spark part, but for some reason uh, it's not uh, loading uh, the audio file. Uh, I think the type is the problem. Uh, it's expecting a web, and I think it's a web map that's uh, that's being loaded. So uh, currently the Spark part is not exactly working as we hoped, but uh, we created another replacement using uh, a normal Python mm -hmm. script, which was a bit slower than the Spark, but. Uh, it yeah. Does it. yeah so so the i think your Ross also asked me uh or is it Ross, i don't know who Tesfaya maybe uh Tesfaya. uh so it will be up until probably uh, evening so that's basically 7 utc 7 pm utc so if you have anything just to wrap up whatever you can do and we'll we are thinking about how to give you actually where you can deploy some things so we'll think about but at least you will have it until 7 pm for any wrap up or you know uh, getting things that you want okay okay so anyone else from i know that time is up but uh group one or group two do you want a demo okay so maybe maybe in that case you know we, we will just go directly to the hot seat yeah back to you ever stand but thanks guys i think this is really i'm sure you know this has been a slightly uh, complex in the sense of that you have to juggle different technologies and you seem to be really comfortable with that and that's really a good sign so thank you everyone and thanks all team everest and mary to you Thanks, Yabi. Uh, so just one thing I want to add, Yabi, so is we want to put the tutorial, the intro, introduction to this challenge to 10 a.m. Yes. So that, so that yeah. after um, the hot seat, they can probably take a break. Yes. Okay, so I guess today's hot seat person is the night. So we can probably start at as usual you can turn on your camera okay then okay so i can see you now so we can now start by seeing hands up from your colleagues so as many used to do that um, many hands up so we can start by probably asking you some burning questions <laughs> So let's see hands. Uh, yeah, be the first one. Let's, let's see others, please. Okay, so um, let's see. Guys, let's use our time. So we need many people just to, to ask. Mm, so why not? I will start by okay i'll start by my question then i will we go as others can you know come up with the questions i start by the asking you what's the meaning of your first name oh uh, damn it it means uh yeah. 
I don't actually know the right meaning, but I think it's uh, someone who uh, brings people together, like. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's then, why. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's sure. Sure. Yeah, someone who brings people together, right? So let's go to Yabi. Where do you want to see yourself in two years? Uh, I'm. Mm, hard question. Uh, I want a stable life, you know, a happiness, happy life, maybe. Okay. Great. Salam. What's the riskiest thing you've ever done in your life? I'm sorry? What's the riskiest thing you ever done? Riskiest, the risk, the, the most risk you have taken. Quit my job. Hmm. Okay, um, then we go to Tadesse. Hello, good morning. How are you? Oh. Who uh, who is your role model, especially from ladies? Oh, my mom. Yes, uh, and why? Because she's a strong woman, as a woman. Mm -hmm. Now does. Okay, hi, Donate. Hi. Um, so from the traditions in your country, which one do you find the most absurd or does not make sense to you? Uh, I love most of them. I don't know. Uh, okay. No, I don't know. Pass. So, wait, if you probably don't have to answer, just say pass, then we move on. <laughs> yeah. So, next person, Daisy. Hi, can I when is your birthday? What? I didn't hear. Oh, my birthday on uh, July 31, the last day of the class, I think. So we will have to celebrate that. Yay. So, Biniam, we have four minutes, guys. Okay. Uh, so, what would you do if you don't get a job immediately after this program? What's your plan? find an intern job, maybe, until I find uh, the real job. That's why. Okay, Danite, where do you live right now and uh, where do you want to move to if you get a job after this training? I live in Adsawa, I want to stay here. You let me? Uh, okay. Uh, what would you like? What, what would you change about yourself if you could? About myself? Yes. Uh, I don't want to change anything. Just want to be more skilled. Me. Um, Ken. Ken. <clears throat> if if you had a chance to make one person in this batch batch five disappear. Uh -huh. Who will you be and why? Plus, <laughs> no one. <laughs> that was too burning. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, what's your definition of success? Uh, being in a place where you can be happy. Okay, uh, tonight we have 30 seconds. <laughs> We have received to have someone who can ask, but I can go on. Um, what's your most accomplishment so far? The biggest one. Um, uh, graduating, maybe. All right, that's good. Matilda, then Ken, we wrap up. So
Janet, what do you do on your free time? Take a nap, eat, maybe take a walk, watch a movie. Ken? Yep. Another burning one. No. <laughs> dream job or a dream person? I didn't hear that. Would you wish for your to get your dream job or get your dream person? Uh, yes. <clears throat> I will pass this one. <laughs> okay, so guys, thanks. Um, so thanks, the night for Thank you. yeah for coming, and I hope Ken Ken will probably be. Can try to go easy on you. No, it is not. Uh, and also, thanks everyone who participated for, of course, for this session. We like you to probably postpone it, but glad that we are able to do that. We can probably hear. Um, I didn't count questions that probably have been answered, but what I know is that uh, from the questions we've been uh, asked, you probably got a chance to answer most of them and let only two go well done tonight so do we have anyone from the group who wants to provide a feedback to probably the night something that you probably learned from from her then we close So no one, something, just one thing that you learned from the night. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Is there no, I was, I was, I was asking from the group um, if they can share feedback or something they have been able to learn from you. To someone who is quick to just speak up. If none, we can yes, this. Every everyone prefer to mute. So let me say one thing. Uh, I like the Danite personality uh, in terms of uh, the respect she have for uh, for family, especially for mothers. And uh, in addition to that, uh, the way uh, the the brave heart she have to each of us for the Martin question, she have uh, answered uh, in a in a reverse way. So this from my side. Okay, thanks, Adesia. Thanks, the night for. For today, uh, we're done, as you can see from me and from the team. So, hoping to see the next one, um, and of course, tomorrow, and also the rest of how the week is going to go. So, cheers, guys. So, someone from. So, yeah, in, in 10 minutes, so there is a 10 minutes um, break, and we'll meet here for the challenge description. Okay. So, I will be here. Uh, muted, but I'll start in 10 minutes. <laughs>